Hello everyone. What's up? This is Devanshi and you are watching Science Q. Today we will be discussing about genetically modified crops and how they are useful to us. We will also learn the procedure of their making as well as their applications. So without any delay, let's get started. In order to understand genetically modified crops, firstly you need to know why they were introduced. In the years between 1930s to 1960s, the world population experienced tremendous growth leading to the shortage of food products. The conventional methods were incapable of sufficing this huge need. At this time, the Green Revolution came into existence, which mainly focused on high yielding crop varieties and use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. These two approaches tripled the food production, but still were insufficient of curbing the existing demand. Moreover, the constant use of chemical fertilizers and pesticides polluted the soil and water bodies. To overcome this problem, the concept of hybridization was introduced. In this process, two plants with desired traits are crossed to obtain a plant which has characteristic properties of both. For instance, crossbreeding two plant varieties, one having red colored tomatoes with shorter shelf life and other having orange tomatoes with longer shelf life produces a tomato plant with red tomatoes and longer shelf life. But the certainty or the probability of success in this process is quite low. Therefore, this process was also not satisfactory. Finally, the agricultural biotechnology introduced the idea of transgenic crops. These genetically modified crops applied a great effort to change the face of this condition by increasing the production up to 200 to 300 times. For production of transgenic crop, the gene coding for the desired character is inserted into the host genome. As the host genome divides, our desired gene also flourishes. A gene is inserted in conventional apple tissue which seizes its browning process and produces the apples with delayed browning. As you can see that both the hybrid as well as transgenic crops include the DNA manipulation but the transgenic plants contain DNA from another organisms via gene splicing whereas the hybrid plants contain DNA directly from both the parents via fertilization. Now the question arises what GM stands for and what are GM crops? So the GM stands for genetic modification and GM crops are genetically modified crops whose genetic framework has been desirably manipulated. These crops undergo gene alteration and modification to insert the desired gene into the host genome. You must be wondering where you can find the examples of genetically modified crops. So let me tell you, the GM crops are now very common. This approach has been widely used in the crops like cotton, maize, soya bean, brinjal and canola. Let us discuss how genetically modified crops are produced. For production of GM crops, both direct and indirect methods are available. Here, we will discuss the indirect method that uses the vectors for genetic transfer. Agrobacterium consists of a circular DNA known as plasmid. This plasmid is removed from the bacteria and the tDNA region is cut with the help of restriction enzymes. In the next step, the desired DNA is taken and inserted into the cleaved part of DNA. The fourth step is the reinsertion of plasmid into the bacterium. Later, the bacterium is allowed to attack the plant. During this process, the bacteria transfers its genetic material into the plant along with our desired fragment of gene. In this way, the desired gene is incorporated in the chromosomes of plant cell. In the next step, the plant cells are grown in the culture medium under the controlled conditions. At last, the plant is generated that carries the foreign gene and may express it as a new trait. Moving on to why genetically modified crops are better than the conventional crops. The genetically modified crops are more tolerant to the environmental conditions. Thus, the chances of crop damage are minimal. For this reason, there is increased crop production. These crops have better temperature tolerance. They can survive extreme hot and cold weather. They have made it possible to cultivate the crops with increased nutritional values. Genetically modified crops are less susceptible to the viral diseases. This virus resistance make it easier for the farmers to prevent the crop damage. Better floriation. The floriation refers to the production of flowers. The genetically modified crops are constructed in such a way that they are capable of producing more quantity and better quality of flowers. These crops have better resistance to chemical pesticides, herbicides, weedicides and fungicides. One of the most common example of genetically modified crop is Bt cotton. Scientists have extracted the cry gene that produces Bt toxin from the bacteria named Bacillus thuringiensis and incorporated it into the crops using vector. Bt acts as toxin for pests and insect. Under normal condition, it stays inactive, that is in its protoxin form. But as soon as the insect invades the plant, this toxin enters the insect's gut where it gets activated due to the alkaline pH. 
This activated toxin attacks the epithelial lining of the gut, creating pores in it. Consequently, the epithelial cells swell and lice, causing the death of insect. This approach keeps the cotton plant healthy and protected from the invaders for a longer time. Other than BT cotton, golden rice is also a prevalent example of genetically modified crop. The concept of golden rice was introduced when a large amount of global population started experiencing the deficiency of vitamin A. Later, the studies discovered that huge proportion of population takes rice as their main meal, which provides them with carbohydrates, proteins, some amount of fibers and fats. From this, the agricultural scientist got an idea of incorporating a gene in the rice plant so that it can also produce vitamin A. So when the people intake the rice as their main meal, their problem of vitamin A deficiency also gets solved. This genetically manipulated rice, which was capable of producing vitamin A, was named as golden rice. So friends, that was all for today. I hope you liked the video and if you did, don't forget to give a thumbs up. Do comment, share and subscribe for more such useful videos. Do press the bell icon. Until next time, this is me Devanshi signing off.